ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome back from New York City and WCS America. And congrats to Stardust for winning GMAC. And if y'all are joining us from GMAC, hope you're having a good time. I picked them to win the finals. Did you? I mean, not from the not, beginning. So no, Nick, not Nick the is saying no, no. on Friday before the tournament no, even no. starts, he sees the player list. He sees Stardust. He's like, all right, Stardust wins. Once he, uh, <laughs> once he, uh, once life was knocked out outside the bracket. Yeah. Oh. Then, then I picked them. Show, not sh no faith in show. I, I didn't think show would beat Stardust, man. Stardust is such a good Korean Protoss. Yeah. Um, it's good. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Stardust really good. Pretty yeah. awesome name. Stardust. Like, let's be honest. He gets he all has, the ladies. He does. And, and the cool thing about him is he has that Kessa background. Yeah. So his mechanics are so good. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things people uh, don't realize is that players that doesn't say mechanics, if they stick to just timing builds, they're almost unstoppable. Because, uh, or if it goes to late game, then they focus on multitasking. Right. As long as it's not about one big engagement, as long as it's either multitasking or uh, perfecting macro for time attack, those guys are just almost impossible to beat uh, without that same training background. Yeah, uh, you know, great story there out of DreamHack. Congrats to Stardust. Um, also, really cool seeing him try to, his English is actually really good. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it like, really surprised me. Like, in control, ask a question, and then flew in English, flies out of Stardust. Really cool to see. Um, but guys, coming up next, WCS America, we got the winner's match between Oz and Sage. The winner of this best of three will advance to Premier League Season 2 to join the existing 19. No, three more than that. 22. The 22 players already qualified. Is that right? Do the math. Verify it. Yes. Yes. Sick. Yes, because we, we need 10 more. This week, there'll be 10 more players who qualify. Oh, we should explain that a little bit. Yeah, so eight, 8 come from the round of 8 premiere from yeah, Season the, 1. Top 8 from Season 1, basically. Yeah. And then 8 come from the 8 that qualified through the bracket stage of yeah. Challenger League. And that was about two weeks ago. Yeah, not not, not too long ago. Yeah. Um, and then we had 6 qualify last week. We had 3 groups over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Top 2 from each group. Move on. That comes out to 22. Get out calculators and verify it if you want, but I promise it's true. Nick is my calculator. Indeed. When I have a math problem, I just shout it across the room at home <laughs> instead of pulling out a calculator. Nick, what's the answer to this? All right. So Oz or Sage, we're currently in the lobby. Bell's your vestige. I'm asking if players are ready. But I think this 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 might have been expected. Though said, though gosh, that was a good best of three. I, it was. You know, I I actually uh, I I thought it might be Oz for us. I thought Sen might might win this group. Yeah. Um, I honestly feel like in PVP, uh, Oz is, is really struggled. And, and this That's is true. a situation where if, if he uh, was up against um, Sen, then I feel like he'd almost have to beat Sen because he does not want to fight Sage in, in the final match. But up against Sage, in a way, even though his PvP is worse, right. it, it's not quite as bad because if he can win this, he's through. If he loses this, he still has that final chance against uh, most likely Sen unless Phoenix can get his inner together and then have ha to beat Sen as well. Right. Um, but most likely the, the final match will be Sen versus the loser this. And uh, and that's a matchup where Oz he loves PVZ, uh, and, and he can he can still have a good shot via that route as well. All right, guys, welcome back to the terrain and the map that is Belshir Vestige in our game number one of this best of three of the winners match in the top left hand location. I present to you your blue Protoss player representing Team Root Gaming, trying to join his teammates Theognis, Puck, and Vibe, who are currently in Premier. He is Sage. His opponent in the bottom right hand location of Belshir Vestige, the evil genius's Protoss player. Trying to overcome his struggles in PvP as of late to get his spot into the Premier League of WCS America Season 2. I present to you, Oz. I just thought about that for a second as I realized that we may not see Sen make it through the Challenger League. Make it through, oh, into Premier? Yeah. It could happen. Like, Sen is a guy. He made fourth in the global finals at WCS last year. Yeah. He's won like every event from Taiwan. He's played with the best in Korea and he's prevailed almost as often as he's lost. Uh, I mean, he's, this is a guy who's he's, he's a match for the, the, the guys who play in the Challenger League in, in WCS Korea. And for him not to make it through the Challenger League in WCS America back into the Premier League Season 2 mm -hmm. would just be absolutely huge. I mean, this, this is really the group of death when you think about it. I, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, I, I agree. This group is so, so tough. Um, you know, for Sen to have to go up against Sage in the first match, and you know, that first game, how deflating would that be? You know, he played so well throughout, and then all of a sudden, 
just one thing goes wrong, right? He loses all those queens and engaging with half his army. It's, 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 it's you know, it's potentially heartbreaking. So, but you know, he's not out of it. It's important to know he's not out of it. Sen is waiting down below in the lo loser's match. Um, we'll have to see if Phoenix again can come back with good internet, um, or or Sen will go to the final match of the day to play the loser of this game. But um, you know, it's not happening just yet. But here we are, PVP best of three, game one. Oz is really focusing on gas. He got two gases before Psycho, which is uh, fairly standard. But he also immediately put three probes on each gas the instant they finished which is fairly unusual, because it's really going to crimp your, your mineral uh, economy quite early. When we see Sage, well, he also got the two gas before Psychor. He, uh, he only had two on each for quite a long time. Now he has three on one and two on the other. Uh, and we can see that's why he's got 100 less gas in the bank, but 100 more minerals. And, and so their builds are, are already different in, in the opening. One player with more minerals, one player with more gas. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how that affects the first five, six minutes of the game. Beyond that, it'll probably bounce out. But the first five, six minutes, the tech speed, the unit count, the expansion yep. speed, could all be greatly affected by a, a small deviation of just how many probes to put on gas. Now, I wonder if, if, if Sage kind of did it for that, because I was watching his probe as he walked in. He didn't necessarily click on the gases, but he did obviously identify that there are three in each. Is that going to be enough to know, okay, my guy, my, my opponent is really prioritizing the gas in this game? It is, it is. And if they're going that gas heavy, the first thing you check how many pylons are in the base? Because you're worried about something like a proxy Stargate or something. Sure. Um, but it, you know, if you see enough pylons, you're not as worried about that. Next thing to begin of, okay, that heavy gas, it could be uh, straight to blink, it could be straight to DTs. Uh, and, and it basically means that you can't trust the first couple units you see. If they don't have a lot of gas early and you see them open with like two stalkers in a century, they're like, okay, there, there's no way they have a whole lot of extra gas and tech and safety fast. But if, if you know they have all that gas early on, you basically can't afford to trust um, uh, the build based on their initial couple of units. So we see a Dark Shrine has been the choice for us. Sage, sending a Stalker across the right-hand side, spots his probe. Oh, that's big. That's and so important that he killed the probe. Oh, the pylon had to be canceled. canceled as well. Wow. So, so the, the most important part of... Okay, sending another probe out. Very logical. You know, the most important part when you're going for a DT, uh, a DT opening is you hit as fast as humanly possible with the Dark Templars. That means, you know, it, as close as possible you get a pylon to your opponent's main, it's going to be great, right? Ideally, your pylon is in their mineral line, and you make it, and you, you, you use some spray paint and try to try to disguise <laughs> it to make it look like your it opponent's. Change the pylon. Exactly. Um, that's actually happened to me. There's like a pylon on my base that was mine, and then like an enemy DT comes out of nowhere. <laughs> like, what the heck? Of course, I go back and watch replay and face palm, but... Uh, so, so uh, Sage caught the first pylon, of course, yes. like you mentioned, Oz going DT rush, uh, has to get the uh, pylon up to send a second probe, he's going to get the second pylon, uh, but Sage, he's got this observer already being chrono boosted, so he's not going to take too much damage to this, and now Oz has a couple options, okay, it looks like he's just going to expand behind us, uh, and so he's going to be in a situation where he's going to be a little bit behind economically, uh, because his expansion is later, but he has the constant threat of DTs, uh, so that's always, uh, it's nice to have that tech unlocked throughout the game. Server pops out. Maybe a bit of overkill. Yeah, I, for I, one DT, two force fields, and photon overcharge. I like the force fields because it would have gotten away yes. without those. But the photon overcharge, um, it's actually that could be super valuable. If if Oz was going for you know a, a four gate follow up, mm -hmm. uh, you would really want that to defend against a charge at Archon time. And of course, Sage is still a little bit in the dark about exactly how Oz is following up the DTs, uh, which is why he's, he's currently boosting out the uh, the immortal, and now he's gonna get a second observer so he can send his first one out to get that very important scouting information. Yeah, we got that, that natural expansion being placed down uh, for Oz. And no Hussein Phoenix is being sent out just yet. I don't think for either player, which is mildly interesting. Um, well, again, Oz, Oz knows what Sage is, is up to, more or less. Right, um, but uh, like more from Sage's point of view, of course, yeah. using those force shields earlier, and then you don't necessarily know exactly what's coming next, so you want to be a little bit cautious. Keep the energy on those sentries, uh, and not necessarily send that out. But uh, I, I don't think he's spotted his opponent's natural expansion yet, but at this point he can probably kind of guess because he's not being attacked. Yeah, this one, yeah, exactly. If it was a Temple 1 base plate attack, it would have hit already. Yep. Um, or else, just, I mean, Sage is defended without a problem. Um, so he, he went ahead and cleaned up those uh, those pylons, and, and now, like you mentioned, uh, Oz is sending out the hallucination scout. He wants to know, okay, I know my opponent expanded with Robo, mm -hmm. but how is he following this up? Is he doing something crazy like Double Stargate? Is he going straight to, to Colossi? Is he going to get upgrades, blink? 
Is he going for add is he adding two or three gateways and trying to do some immortal gateway push? Uh, these are all very important things to know because if your opponent is coming to attack, you know, okay, to just defend and we'll be ahead as long as they don't cut probes. If, if, if they're playing really greedy, you might need to accelerate your own pace or try to hit a time attack of your own. Double uh, Jose Phoenix Scout there from, um, from Sage. Spotting two immortals, spotting the forge, spotting everything that's going on. Now both these players know what the other is doing. So Oz identifying the blink play from his opponent. Meanwhile, Sage spotting the unit comp of his opponent. And now we're seeing some progression into additional tech. We've got a high Templar archives coming down from Sage. And it looks like Oz is going to be prioritizing the upgrades at this point. As far as attack upgrades. That's right. Uh, both players are getting plenty of immortals. Uh, one of the things is, if you don't have a, a couple immortals out, blink can be so scary. Because even if you have a lot of units, if you don't have the ability to just put a whole ton of damage out instantaneously, like with, like with the immortals in effect, the all the damage is front loaded, right? It's 50 damage, boom, right off the bat, right when they hit. If you don't have that instant impact to the stalkers, your opponent can just kind of pick at you forever with blink stalkers and not take losses. So, uh, in the early games uh, in, in PvP, if your your opponent might be getting stalkers, it's always good to get a couple mortals out just to be safe. Uh, of course, you don't always want mass immortals, but it never hurts to have a few in the composition. Yeah, of course. Uh, once you get to those late game stages, it's all about those layers and, and how they uh, how they deal with each other. Now, I'm gonna be interested to see where they go from here. As far as okay, do we start seeing colossi based composition? Do we start seeing void ray based compositions? The third is going to go down, and some of those answers, uh, some of those questions, are actually being answered now. We see a nexus going down here from Sage in the top right at his third base, and Oz is going for a robotics bay, and I think Oz also got a Stargate. He did, uh, unless he canceled. He's it. investing a lot oh, no, in his he, two bays. Did he cancel a Stargate? I definitely saw one in production, Nick. Don't call me a liar, because that's what I saw. I saw it too. Okay, uh, but I don't. So I think he canceled it. I think okay. we can agree that he canceled it. Uh, and, and one thing that Sage did that was needed is he very quickly added six gates in the Templar Archives, right? Uh, but he hasn't really used them yet. But what he did is he, he built the six gates and got a third base. And if his opponent went to pressure at third base, he could warp in a ton of units, he could warp in charge out Archons and, and everything he needs to, uh, to defend at third base. But if his opponent's not going to attack a third, he can go ahead and tech up. He can get some cannons to defend against uh, harassment. He can add in a Stargate, uh, focus on upgrades. Uh, and he's actually sharking around here looking to deny his opponent's third. Very important, though, he has that mothership core with his army because his army uh, it could potentially yes. lose an engagement, right? So he's just trying to scout tonight a third, be annoying. Doesn't necessarily want to get stuck in a, in a pitch engagement right now. So Oz, again, is, is really investing a lot into this two base play. He has six immortals there in that composition. One Zell can be left at that third to make sure he knows exactly when that timing is. There's a hallucinated phoenixes from Sage. So it looks like. He's going to add on some Colossus, and this feels like this would be a very late third. So is he just going to invest everything into two bases here? He might, but uh, with six Immortals, you know, the composition is not going to be that scary to Sage. Because, yeah. you know, Sage does have some Stalkers, but as long as they stay in the back and the Immortals can't approach him, uh, what Sage needs to do is he either needs to get a ton of Zelts in the front of Tank, or he needs to go into Airplane. It, that's, it looks like he's, gonna, he's actually getting to, uh, going straight to Fleet Beacon, this double Stargate Air. This and this is a, a little bit of a risk because if Oz hits before he gets too many units on the field, yeah. without the mass zealots to tank, uh, you know, Oz is going to have a, a stronger ground composition for sure. <laughs> so one, one HP. Wow, that cell is definitely limping along right now. In fact, he just canceled the fleet beacon, adding in more motors. gateways because he realizes his opponent's doing a two base timing. Okay, the longer this goes along, the better position Sage is in. He has three bases, economy is better. The more money, the more time, the more units in his composition. Oz knows this is going to hit as fast as possible. He has three devices that crush force fields from his opponent. Two Archons and a Colossus. A time warp coming down here from uh, from Oz. But he's backing up, biding time, adding more High Templar, adding more Archons. You know, uh, Sage has a really good position defending this ramp. And, and if he can get four to six Void Rays, he'll focus on the Colossus. Oh. Break. oh, and nice pick off there. Takes down Mothership Core. Oz might commit himself. Oh my god, the Time Warp hitting everything on this ramp. Sage with a brilliant concave. Another Time Warp going down. We're seeing a bit of a Venn diagram there. I wonder if people are, I wonder if units are double slowed if it's two uh, Time Warps <laughs> on top. But anyway, we got Void Rays activating uh, Prismatic Alignment to take down armor units potentially. I mean, that attack just had no chance by Oz there. The, his Immortals couldn't really get into action. They were shooting other Immortals. They were shooting Zelts. And Sage's composition is based around the Void Rays and, and Immortals. And 
Immortals aren't, aren't great against either of those, but Oz is so committed. Uh, he's going to have to warp in enough Zelda to, to break through the front line, but then he also needs to deal with the growing Void Ray count. And again, as it's it's as time goes along, Sage is happy. Like his econ is fantastic. He's got those three bases. He knows his opponent does that zealot still holding strong. But here comes Oz activating the Guardian Shield. Three immortals, lots of zealots here. But again, the void rays above need to be targeting down. Uh, well, they're uh, doing a good job there. I think maybe picking the the immortals and the bosses would be a little bit better. But trying to take down those archons as fast as possible. I think Sage might just have too much. He's up 120 to 80 supply. With I those mean, three bases. it's just a simple more stuff greater than less stuff. Uh, yes. And what was so important there is the initial engagement. Oz was behind uh, just by kind of doing a two-base timing, which, yeah. which in PvP, uh, the third base usually beats the two-base timing with the, uh, the advent of the Mothership Core and us trying yeah. to be too greedy. But it was compounded by the fact he had to go up the ramp. And when he got time up on the ramp, yeah, I think he only, like, half his immortals weren't even fighting for the majority it's of that all engagement. bunched up. They're all trying yeah. to get to the front. I, 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 like the, the ramp was about three to four mortals wide. Yeah. Everything was just smashed together there. Um, and, and like like we can see here, right? There, there's a couple mortals in the back that. that uh, Archon. Yeah, they're only able. Yeah, the Archons are stuck. It's just the positioning and the time warps. It's really neutralizes the army so well. And the concave at the top was oh, just yeah. brilliant by Sage there. It was. I mean, Oz's units were. They were brave. They tried to get up the ramp, but. Yeah. You know, bravery uh, doesn't actually matter in StarCraft. There's no. no there's no morale, there's no... Coming in the next patch, yeah. I talked to David Kim. I can't say any more than that. But guys, Sage taking the 1-0 lead over Oz in this best of three. Oz must win two in a row here, guys. Stay tuned. Game two of the winner's match coming up.